Buenos dias, singular to you, Peru. Mi amo Will Wiseman, I'm an executive director at Singularity University, and it is my great, great pleasure to be here today. We've been talking about being here for a long time, so I'm excited that uh, we're finally here. So we're here today because extraordinary things are happening in the world. They're happening here, they're happening in Peru. There's extraordinary, exciting technologies that are absolutely changing the world that we're living in. I want to share just a few of those developments with you. We're obviously going to spend a lot of time over the next two days doing a deep dive into these different technologies uh, and trends that are taking place. But I wanted to share kind of a couple fun videos that I think encapsulate some of the really breathtaking things that are taking place. So I don't know if everyone has seen this video. This is of the Space, uh, SpaceX Heavy D Falcon launch that took place earlier in the year today. Space has been going through an absolutely extraordinary period of change, right? We've seen what's happening in terms of the frequency of the launches, the reusability of the different parts of the rockets, the fact that they're able to compress the amount of time between these launches, and it's dramatically changing the economics of what it means to, to travel to space and able to you know, pull off something like this, which looks like it's animated, it looks like it's science fiction, but this is really happening in our world right now. Uh, and it's incredibly extraordinary. This is from a company called Soul Machines that is out of New Zealand. So this is a 3D rendering, an avatar that they've created that they're now combining with voice recognition technologies. And you can imagine in a couple iterations, you know, a couple more doublings of technology, that this is going to seem like a real human being to you, right? This is going to be the, your interface for uh, conducting business, for talking to large companies, for for asking questions and, and prompting uh, databases or queries with databases. So again, not quite there, but we're getting very, very close. This is on the science side. So this is a uh, microscope that is able in real time to look inside your body, inside a living organism, and it's able to look at the cellular level and tell you what's happening, show you what is happening. So you think about what this means in terms of insight to, to medicine and healthcare and being able to get this type of granularity in real time in a non-invasive way. It's going to change medicine and what healthcare looks like. And uh, I'm a hobbyist artist and as someone who likes to paint, I think these are also just extraordinarily beautiful images as well and, and really art in their own, own way. This is from Boston Dynamics. We're going to talk a little bit more about this uh, in, my, in my second talk, but you know, this is an autonomous robot that's now doing parkour. And it's just extraordinary, the amount of change that's taken place in the last year. It's a little scary with the sound effects, um, but it just shows you kind of how quickly this is all moving forward. So Singularity University brings a very unique vantage point to looking at the world today. Uh, and for those of you who are new to SU, this is our first time here in Peru after all, I, I wanted to take just a few minutes to tell you a little bit about who we are, kind of how we look at the world, what makes us click. You can think of us as part think tank, part educator, and part accelerator, or creator of new companies. We're also a benefit corporation, which means that we focus on a double bottom line. It means not just about making money, but how do we actually positively impact the world. So our mission is to educate, inspire, and empower leaders to apply accelerating technologies to address humanity's grand challenges. For me, you know, I feel incredibly lucky to be part of an organization that their sole purpose is really to, to think about how we create a brighter future for everybody. Right? How do we create this world of abundance that technology and all of us are going to make, make possible? So our two founders are Ray Kurzweil and Peter Diamandis. You're going to hear from Peter a little bit later on in the program uh, tomorrow. Um, they came together in 2008. Ray had written a book called The Singularity is Near. They both realized that we were about to go through this really dramatic period of change. Right? Technologies were going to change everything, and we were entering kind of the knee of the curve uh, in many of these technologies in terms of exponential growth, and that was going to create all sorts of disruption throughout the world. 
What they also realized was that most of us had no clue that this was about to happen. And so individuals and businesses and governments really were not prepared for this at all. Uh, and so the idea of Singularity University was born and, and our, in our humble way, trying to help humanity kind of navigate this next period and hopefully realize uh, a better outcome for, for everyone. So Peter Diamandis is the first half of our founding equation. He is, uh, as you'll see if you haven't interacted with him or heard from before, he's a force of nature. Uh, he brings incredible energy and enthusiasm. He is an author, an entrepreneur, and a real innovator. You hear him talk a lot about the best way to create a billion dollars in value is to solve a problem that impacts a billion people. Uh, he, he really is an incredibly exciting and insightful individual, and, and it's a lot of who SU is is a direct result of Peter, and I'll get into a little more detail in the exponential talks about how he is impacting us. So Ray Kurzweil is the other half of our founding equation. He is a brilliant inventor, an author, a director of engineering over at Google. And as I mentioned, it's really Ray's insights around the exponential growth of technology that's the foundation for our curriculum at Singularity University. What's also amazing is that his unique insights into how these technologies grow has really enabled him to become one of the most, if not the most, accurate predictors of the future that the world has ever seen. It's his insight, it's not that he's a magician, it's that he understands how these technologies are growing and is able to extrapolate that insight to make predictions about what will happen in terms of products and, uh, and services that will become available. So this organization, Singularity University, that started as a dream 10 years ago, now has 130 chapters around the world. We have almost 200,000 community members, uh, and the newest members are here with us today in the audience. So welcome, we're, we're thrilled to have you as part of the SU community. So this global vantage point at SU has really given us unique insight. We get to bring convened summits like this all over the world. We get to talk to all sorts of leading thinkers and doers throughout the world, and it allows us to see some, I think, uh, unique trends, and I wanted to share a couple, with, a couple of those with you to just kind of kick things off today. So the first of these is that the power of the individual is growing significantly, right? Never has an individual been able to have a bigger impact than they can today. Your access to tools, your access to capital, your access to knowledge, you know, has never been greater. And that enables individual people to have a really huge impact on the world and to make extraordinary things happen. Second, businesses are really being asked to step in, right, to fill this widening leadership vacuum in society. Unfortunately, in, in many parts of the world, including the United States, government is not leading the way. You know, they're not getting done what they need to do to make sure in this period of really rapid change that we're moving in the right direction. So it's up to businesses. What's exciting is that we're starting to see some businesses really step in and, and fill that void. Uh, one of the most exciting developments in the last year to me is from a gentleman named Larry Fink, who heads up BlackRock, which is one of the world's largest money management firms. And what he said was that for him, it was no longer enough basically to have great financial performance. And he wasn't going to be making his investments based just on that. For him, it was really important also to look at what were these companies doing to move the world forward in a positive direction. And as the big investors start to make decisions about how to place their capital as a result of what's go what these companies are doing, that's going to cause companies to, to make some significant changes uh, and to make sure that their contributions to the world are accretive and, and not just extractive. So we talk a lot at SU about doing well by doing good. And so to see things like Larry Fink's uh, announcement and, and companies starting to proactively change how they do business, it's incredibly exciting to us. And so to see this kind of woven into the foundational fabric of business, I think, speaks very well for the direction that we're heading and I think is an important thing for all the, the leaders of businesses in this room to really understand and think about how your business can contribute to the public good as well. So third, technology and technological change are really having significant and unforeseen impacts on society. You know, even as it's bringing all these great things forward, we're starting to, to see that there's also some, some downsides that go along with that. And so 
While much of what we're going to talk about over these next two days is very positive, we tend to be a very optimistic bunch at Singularity University, uh, it's also really important that we acknowledge some of the downsides as well. So one of our faculty members, Nicole Bradford, has this amazing quote that I really love. There's no more noble use for technology than to bring peace to the minds of mankind. It's very aspirational and something we should be, I think, working hard to, to help bring to fruition. But unfortunately, we're, we're not doing too well uh, in this area. And, and in, especially in the United States, we've seen that people basically are, you know, have never been more anguished and, and kind of feel alienated than they do now. And we've seen skyrocketing increases in the suicide rates, 25% uh, increase since 1999, which is just heartbreaking. And it, it means that we need to take a minute to pause to try to understand you know, what's behind that? Why are these things happening? And we're, we're not alone. Um, this is happening all over the world. Fortunately, South America and Peru is actually doing better than, than uh, many parts of the world. But this is an important thing for us to be thinking about. How does technology impact people? What are the downsides here? How do we make sure that people are realizing their potential and enjoying this relatively short journey through life? So we haven't yet realized how to, how to leverage technology in ways that uh, bring out the best in humans and, and create a world where everyone can thrive. But the good news, as I mentioned, is that we're, we're really starting to talk about this. And this is becoming an increasing part of the conversation at, at SU. So it's important for sure to acknowledge that not everything is great in the world, right? This is a, a this Ride is a bumpy one for sure. There's all sorts of examples that we're seeing day after day of some of the chaos that's, uh, that's affecting us, but there's so much for us to be optimistic about. And at Singularity University, we are incredibly optimistic. This really is the best time in life that humans have ever known. If you look at the last 100 years, important indicators like education levels, uh, number of democracies, life expectancy, and poverty levels, they're all having their best showing in history. So it's not to say that this is good enough, but it's also important to just pause for a moment to really internalize that there's a lot of great stuff going on in the world, and humanity is doing a lot of amazing things, and people and their lives are getting better and better and better. So these are extraordinary but challenging times, and. Um, what gets me most excited about my job and about this time in history, really, is that if we're engaged, right, like you are here today, if we're working smartly and we're pulling collectively in the right direction, that we can really create a, a pretty spectacular future. We can create this world of abundance where everyone can thrive. We have plenty of resources right now. So it's really a matter of the political will and the determination to make these things happen, to make them into reality. And that's why we're here today to kind of talk about what's happening in the world and, and how we move the world forward in a positive direction. So this gathering itself is also uh, an amazing opportunity for us, right? We've got these incredible people who are all gathered. You know, this is a pretty amazing audience of leaders here in Peru. And if you think about the opportunity of having all of this collective minds, um, all these collective minds together, uh, and what we might be able to accomplish as a group, the connections, the relationships, the new business opportunities that might come out of it, uh, it's pretty extraordinary, and I really hope you'll, you'll take advantage of that. Uh, so it's not just about leaving with great new insights, but it's also leaving with great new relationships and connections and collaborators and partners. So again, we've been talking about being here at Peru for a very long time. It's incredibly exciting for us to finally be here, to be able to, to officially kick off the summit. I want to thank you all for taking time from your busy schedule to, to join us today. I'm going to do my best over these next two days to keep things moving quickly, to, to add insights, and, and hopefully help you see some of the things, how these different subjects are, are connected, and, and again, hopefully leave you very energized about where we are and where we're going and the opportunity, not only for yourself, but for Peru and for the entire world. So I want to thank you so much for joining us as we kick things off. Thank you. Thank you.